my name is Ariel Sandor. I'm your host today on What It Takes, brought to you by Tech More on TV and coming at you from the Duma Works office in Nairobi, Kenya. Uh, what It Takes show is all about helping young, ambitious people understand what it takes to be successful in their career or entrepreneurial journey, whichever they choose. And who better to help us understand what it takes than some of the more professional and successful people in the country. So today we bring you uh, Peter Diangui from OLX. He's the country manager and he's going to be giving us some of the secrets of the trade and how he's achieved such great success in his career. So Peter, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. I know traffic it was a bit hectic but um, I'd love to get started and just hear a little bit about you and what your career journey has looked like so far. Great. Um, so, uh, if you just get started first, uh, uh, born and bred in, uh, uh, in Nyeri County, in a farm in Nyeri. And uh, one of the things that uh, uh, I started doing quite early on was to, uh, uh, I had very, very uh, good parents in the first place. Uh, uh, Christian background, uh, highly disciplined, uh, and uh, that I think helped me in my early years uh, as I started in through uh, school. I went to a very basic school in Nyeri called Nyeri High School, uh, which uh, is kind of Catholic school and uh, also discipline was quite hard. Uh, I think those early moments of, uh, for example, uh, waking up in the farm to feed the animals were very, very important in shaping my discipline uh, because I think one of the things is that the law of the farm applies uh, regardless anywhere that if you don't plant, then you don't get to harvest. So, uh, after high school, uh, I was uh, able to secure a place in one of the Kenyan universities uh, at the Jomo Kenyatta University where, again, I studied science there. And uh, my perspective at that time was to get involved in biotech uh, because I always had these uh, things that I used to keep researching about trends in uh, technology and in technology not being IT, for me it was just new things that are happening. And at that point, uh, because I was doing uh, uh, sciences like biochemistry, I was fascinated by the idea of uh, genes and how to uh, change certain things to make them better, for example, in, uh, uh, plant biotechnology. I interned at the Kenya Medical Research Institute. Those kind of things really helped me start thinking deeply and broadly about what technology can do for, uh, for us, as, us as human beings. And later on, I also remember interning again at uh, the same institute, uh, working with uh, uh, HIV, uh, HIV AIDS projects, again around uh, uh, looking at the genome of of uh, the, the HIV virus. And then later, um, also I think my third internship was with uh, International Center for Research in Agroforestry, which is IPAC. And there then I uh, looked at the importance of soil science. Uh, I remember uh, we, when I first got in, looking at guys uh, in soil bags in a lab shaking soils. And I was wondering, geez, what the hell are these guys doing in lab coats and like PhD in source? What, is, what exactly is that? And uh, by the end of the week, uh, I had really started to see how important it was to understand soil for agriculture and why agriculture required a really good focus on the science of the soil to understand the nutrients and to really then advise farmers on what to do. And that was again fascinating to me about how science uh, can shape a society and how science can help a society prosper. So after that, uh, my uh, sister was running uh, the really early first days uh, a distribution of the first cell phones in, uh, in Kenya. Uh, I think Safaricom had just been uh, formed, it was around 1998 there, and she had been uh, licensed to be one of the distributors. It was interesting, we had to be licensed to be a distributor of, uh, of telco products. And uh, so, so therefore I had access to the internet uh, from, uh, from her business. And uh, one of the things I started learning was, uh, again, the power of the internet because internet was not accessible to a lot of people. And I started thinking about, oh, I want to do something around the internet. And the first thing I thought of was, I think I need to do a little bit more study. 
uh, on the in internet technology. And at that point, uh, I uh, decided that I wanted to get out of the country and to study a little bit more. And I decided to move to Australia, uh, where the interesting thing was that I enrolled in a course called uh, Internet uh, Computing. Uh, so it was a master's level course, and it had a lot of units around uh, uh, general computer science, but also a lot of areas around e-commerce and the internet. And I remember my, uh, just before my course ended, starting up a blog, uh, which is called KenyaImagine.com. Uh, I used to start blogging about politics and uh, why uh, uh, Kenya is not moving and writing articles uh, about economic development. And uh, that started my uh, journey towards the web. And I think it has been a progression from a curious scientist to a more pragmatic businessman. Wow. And so, how do you feel like your science background has impacted your ability to conduct business? Were there certain skill sets that you got from that more, I guess, analytical background that have helped you? Yeah, I think uh, what really has, if I look at uh, the, kind of the world where we are now, where people are starting to talk, well, that every business idea is an experiment, then if you go back to science, uh, everything is almost like a hypothesis that needs to be proved. Hmm. So that background, before it gained uh, pop culture and momentum, I think already was something that I, I, I had in my mind that, ah, oh, that's a good idea, maybe it can, it can be tested, you can do some things more and see how it's going to turn out. So the mindset of, of science that trying to discover the truth uh, is always uh, small steps towards what you might discover was already with me. And mm -hmm. The broad thinking of uh, you know of science of uh, technology was already with me because of a wide uh, readership. So I was reading a lot. I remember, for example, being fascinated also by the Gulf War in uh, in the nineteen nineties. I had this scrapbook where I put almost every picture that was in the Kenyan daily that was focusing on, uh, on the Gulf War, and it was just me uh, as a kid. Uh, trying to understand the world. Super interesting. And also there's this kind of blogging aspect yeah. where you're getting a bit of a personal brand, I yeah, guess. Yes. Getting some people to think, oh, yeah. that's Peter guy who's, yeah. who's talking. Yeah. Wow. And so at this point you kind of, you have a really entrepreneurial spirit, yeah. right? Yeah. But when you were there at that point, were you thinking to yourself, oh, am I going to go off on my own, do my own company, or am I going to think about more of a career? Like, what was in your mind at the time? Always. I think from early on, I was also a uh, interested in, uh, uh, I think, I guess research, but research in a bit more applied way. So what that led me into was uh, into consulting uh, assignments. And uh, these types of assignments allowed me to venture into understanding various organizations and industries and how they are run. Is that the point after your consulting opportunities where you began to work with Dealfish and OLX? No. Where did that come in? No, I actually already, um, uh, by the time I was uh, finishing up my MBA, I had already started a, uh, a co-founded KenyaImagine.com, which was uh, started like a blog site and became almost like an online magazine, yeah. uh, which was and various people contributed. It was probably the early, early days of uh, crowd-based contribution into a magazine. Right. Crowdfunding, no kidding. You started that here. Oh, well, like, it was, uh, we were not like the only editors. Uh, there are other people trying to write things. We would take them in and publish them. Wow. Edit them a little bit, publish them, and then we started taking revenue uh, just through simple uh, monetization techniques. Uh, but then after that, I remember it became quite heavy and uh, I had to leave it out to my co-founder. And at some point, the NASPAS group approached me and asked me, uh, would you be interested in helping us run uh, Dealfish? And I really thought about that idea for quite some time, like uh, almost uh, two months, three, no, three, three, four months, before I decided that maybe it was uh, one of my best opportunities to come back to Kenya and, and Saturn Africa and uh, start uh, uh, almost this revolution that was happening uh, 
with a much more uh, scaled up operation uh, of, uh, of NASPAS. And that's where I found myself in here. And then in the following, after I got here, I think it was uh, 2012 March, uh, within three months we started thinking about it running toward us and we got started. Wow. If you were to say that there were kind of three core skills that you had which made you a really appealing candidate when, when OLX and Dealfish were looking at you, what would you say were the things that made you shine and stand out? Yeah. I, 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 I think maybe I don't, I don't have the insight of the, the, the guy who recruited me. He's still a really good friend of mine uh, today. But I think two things. One is that I had understood how to start up something oh. uh, and grow something from a startup into like a sizable thing. Uh, but on the other hand, I also had some good uh, corporate type of experience, uh, you know, managing P&Ls uh, uh, or leading big projects uh, that were uh, involved change and, and transformation and uh, I think those two elements were important, but also the other hand was my, my hunger for, for growth. Like, uh, I was looking forward to this huge opportunity of uh, scaling up a small little entity into a big thing. Mm -hmm. And that hunger is the one thing that I would say I've, I've always had and has really helped me out. So coming to bring that kind of portal into Sub-Saharan Africa and mm. Kenya, mm. that's entrepreneurial in and of itself. I mean, it's kind of you at the reins mm. making things happen. Yeah. And so, you know, being just alone and being yourself there, how did you, um, how did you prioritize? How did you organize your day? Like, how did you understand this needs to get done and then motivate yourself yeah. to, yeah. to make it happen? It starts with a uh, clear understanding of the purpose of what you're trying to get done. Uh, and then from there, then you definitely, as you think about the purpose, uh, then the vision has to be there. Okay, so by this time, uh, we want to be here. And then I think as you work backwards on what needs to get done, uh, the scale of what you have to do and how disciplined you have to be and how hard you have to work becomes even more clear. Uh, because if you just tag in along uh, without having a clear uh, goal, which of course has to be anchored by the purpose of doing this or the why of doing this is X. And as you define those things, uh, that every morning becomes uh, a busy morning. It uh, seems like a common pattern here, like if, with the farming in the beginning, just. Mm having a discipline to do it every day. Yeah, yeah. Your blog writing, your yeah. article writing, having yeah. a discipline, waking up, yeah. doing, putting something on paper, exactly. waking up, getting this company launched. Yeah. So I find at least with being a co-founder and an entrepreneur, yeah. like it's an incredible kind of mirror into yourself as yeah. you run the company and manage yeah. people and you learn a lot of things mm -hmm. about yourself. Was there anything that you learned about yourself throughout this journey that maybe surprised you? And yes. you surprise us? <laughs> yes, yes I did. I did learn uh, that <laughs> On one hand, uh, I can complicate things, hmm. and, and because I'm a, like a born analyst, scientist who is trying to understand, okay, why and why did that happen? Okay, and can we dig a little bit deep? You know, hmm. so sometimes I can complicate things by uh, trying to find a lot of why this happened. So I, I've always tried to force myself to stay on top of simplicity uh, when it requires me to. But um, I discovered that complicating things was almost like a hobby to me. Like trying to, <laughs> like to really understand, okay, uh, okay, let's see how this drill works. Okay, let's, let's open it up and see uh, whether it has another hole, you know? So I think, and I think as you do that, you sometimes you can get caught up uh, in that and you don't move forward. So I always, uh, I look at myself in the mirror and say, okay, am I complicating things here? And should I just rise up and simplify and say, okay, what I, do, what I don't control, what is not in my circle of influence, I don't care about it, I just move forward. So that's one of the things I learned about myself, that uh, if I complicate things too much, then uh, things don't happen. And running a business sometimes is not the same as running a, a science project.
Hmm. Um, hmm. Sometimes you have to be pragmatic. Interesting. Yeah. So, okay, so we're going to cut to um, commercial break yes. and then we'll come right back for the continuation of our show.